Coming up on show 650, Lexus go all EV. More batteries for BMW and more follow-up of the Cybertruck. Well, those stories and many more coming up on the podcast today, the edition for Saturday, 23rd of November. My name is Martin Lee. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. In fact, wherever you're listening around the world. EV News Daily is where I go through every EV story that I can find and package it down, whittle it down into a little 20 minutes of EV news. Thank you as always to myev.com. It is a website in the USA. If you're buying or selling or learning about cars with plug sockets on, and let's face it, they're getting more and more popular all of the time, then your first stop needs to be myev.com to have a look at the cars in your area. Maybe you are uh, in the market to buy. Maybe you are doing some comps to see what other cars around your area have been selling for. Have a look. So let's talk about BMW ordering 10 billion euros worth of battery cells. BMW on Thursday said it had ordered more than 10 billion euros. That's 11 billion dollars worth of battery cells from the Chinese cell maker CATL and Samsung SDI reports Reuters. Now, BMW said it had boosted its order with CATL to 7.3 billion euros from an original booking announced in the middle of last year that was 4 billion. It said the contract would last for the next 10 years, up to 2031, actually. BMW said it had also signed a battery supply contract with Samsung SDI worth almost 3 billion euros, again valid to the same time period. BMW said it would get the cobalt it needs for cell production from mines in Australia and Morocco and provide it to CATL and Samsung SDI. It said it would source the lithium from mines in Australia. It's something that I have in my Twitter feed or comments semi-regularly from people that hate EVs saying, oh yes, but all the cobalt is mined by uh, children, uh, slave labour and terrible conditions and as much as I can be bothered to reply, if, if I think they're just trolling, I ignore people. But if I think people are genuinely interested, I do try and educate them of, yes, whilst there is a, a small percentage of terrible cobalt mining, which shouldn't be happening and exploiting people and work needs to be done to stop that. Any big car maker like BMW that is using things, any kind of uh, sourcing, any kind of materials for any part of their supply chain simply not involved in that part of exploitation. And so, and actually, the, the, uh, there is other things like the quality of cobalt uh, coming uh, from those areas is not high quality enough, and many other things as well. But good to see the supply chain there from BMW being very open and transparent. Let's talk more about Lexus. I told you about this story recently. Lexus, of course, the posh bit of Toyota, unveiling their first pure battery electric vehicle, and it's now been unveiled. It's finally been done. We've seen it. It's called the UX300E, and it was shown off at the Guangzhou International Automobile Exhibition in China, says Pedro at Push EVs. This electric compact, uh, compact SUV has a 150-kilowatt motor. Battery size is what you're wondering that Lexus have put in. It's 54.3 kilowatt hours, not the biggest. And that is a bit of an indication, a sign of the kind of market that they are aiming this car for. Under the WLTP range, it should do 186 miles or 300 Ks. Uh, that is very similar to something like a DS3 Crossback or a Peugeot E2008. Now, the Lexus UX 300E is going to go on sale in Chinese markets and European markets, by the way, in 2020. Shock horror, as I mentioned before. Toyota is the company that chooses not to plug in, inconveniently making a plug-in vehicle. I say that, by the way, if you haven't seen their TV ads, if you haven't seen all their marketing, uh, because they sell these uh, these hybrid cars, uh, they don't want you to buy the pure electric car, so they, uh, they've done some, lots of anti-EV advertising over the years. And I, I said at the time, I'll say it again, they were always going to have to make pure electric cars. It was very, very short-term profiteering to sell the cars they had without one eye on a five- or a ten-year plan where they're going to have to be selling a load of pure battery electric vehicles. But that was their phrase. Toyota chooses not to plug in. Yes, not the wisest thing they ever did. Have a look at the, a look at the press release. Oh, by the way, their, the, their home market, domestic market of Japan, won't go on sale till 2021. So... The European regulations clearly mean that Lexus need to get uh, at least a car, a pure electric car on sale in Europe. 
From the press release, Lexus say that the drive mode, the select function, uh, lets you to choose how the car accelerates and decelerates. Pretty standard stuff on EVs. Uh, you can use the paddle shifter to do more engine braking, or what we would call regen braking. Four levels of regen on the paddles behind the steering wheel. The uh, quietness of the car is something that traditional automakers need to get their head around, and it's very hard to sell an EV without asking people not to buy your existing cars. Take a listen to this quote from the Lexus press release. They say, while EVs are naturally quiet, the UX300e adds insulation beyond just the battery and suppresses outside noises like wind or pebbles, which would otherwise be noticeable in the absence of engine and transmission noise. Following that through, in other words, our combustion cars are so noisy, you can't hear all of those things, but we've made a car that's so quiet, we've now had to insulate the outside world because... Otherwise, you can hear them. It's very hard to say, hey, EVs are quiet. Uh, go. Our other cars are really noisy. Okay, let's move on and talk about Ford Performance, thinking about a Mustang Mach-E for the track. The current top model, the GT model, might not occupy the top spot in the Mustang Mach-E hierarchy for very long. They confirm they're thinking about an even quicker EV, according to Autoblog, with a great, puntastic headline of a Mustang Shelb E. Shelby, the Shelb, Shelb E. Not sure that is a pun. It's good though, isn't it? Autoblogs say that Ford plans to deliver the first examples of the Mustang Mach E in 2020, late 2020, I should add. Uh, but it warned the GT variant won't be on sale until 2021. And, and by then we should know what they'll be doing with their Shelby jeans and getting them into an electric car. Ed Krentz is the Ford Performance Chief Program Engineer and spoke to the British car magazine Evo, said this, and I quote, I'm looking forward to the challenge of applying the Shelby characteristics to an electric car. The trick for us is the fun-to-drive part and sustainability in terms of charging. It needs to be capable to go all day on a track day. You can't do 20 minutes and have to charge it all night, end quote. Sounds like a quote from 10 years ago, or Top Gear of 10 years ago, where they drove the original Tesla Roadster for 20 minutes and then said, oh, we've got to charge it all night now. Uh, Ford there kind of saying stuff that was kind of obvious. Yeah, 10 years ago, no, you don't, you don't want to drive it for 20 minutes and charge it all night. The point being, technology exists these days that means you can hit the track because you can do that, I don't know, in a Tesla Model S and then in the Roadster in a couple of years' time. That'll do the track all day long on a big, big battery as well. Maybe just Ford. Well, they have got access to the technology because they're one of the world's biggest car makers. So, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Obviously, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're not using the same stuff as Tesla are using. So, uh, we'll see where that goes. But, yeah, of course, you don't want to just run out of... <laughs> battery in 20 minutes. It's interesting if you watch those YouTube videos of Tesla Model 3 in track mode, how quickly the battery can deplete if you are doing full-on attack laps. Uh, the battery can really dwindle quite quickly in any EV. All right, moving on. And Lucid, there's a bit of Lucid Motors called a Teva. Uh, if, I'm not sure that Lucid even want to be known for having a Teva. I think they kind of like it to be sort of an independent, standalone kind of company. They uh, according to Clean Technica, uh, the electric vehicle technology company, which was part of Lucid Motors, uh, we haven't heard much from them recently for good reason. They've been working and they've just announced a new battery pack for Formula E's sixth season, says Clean Technica. Ativa is the Silicon Valley based EV technology company held by Lucid Motors. Ativa just announced it designed the spec battery pack for the entire 24 car Formula e field for the season which kicks off this weekend. Uh, the Formula E battery pack was conceptualized, designed, tested, and manufactured by Ativa in Silicon Valley, uh, their new at California headquarters. I should add, by the way, it's a little bit naughty. I'm sure they just forgot to, to put this in the article. Nicholas at Clean Technica kind of ignored the fact that the battery packs in the Formula E cars are actually a partnership between many different, uh, three different companies, primarily. Um, there's this, uh, so Ativa, it, it, the article makes it sound like Ativa are solely responsible for uh, the technology inside the new Formula E cars. But as was announced in September 2016, I think it was, so although the article says they've just announced that they are supplying the batteries, uh, this is this is 
kind of old news, but I want to bring it up because the Formula E season starts now, by the way, this weekend, in Diria. Actually, it's the British company McLaren Applied Technologies. Yes, McLaren of Formula One fame. McLaren Applied Technologies supply the Formula E powertrain. They were awarded the contract by the FIA, the World Motorsport Council, and Formula E back in September 2016. As per car and driver noted at the time, Peter Rawlinson, who is Lucid's CTO, uh, formerly formerly uh, designer of the or the, the CTO of the kind of Model S project at Tesla. Uh, confirmed that the agreement is part of a three-way partnership. McLaren Applied Technologies have to supply the FIA Formula E with the technology. Uh, Lucid's Ativa do the battery design, the BMS, uh, a, a company that used to be known as Sony, but I think, again, they've spun off, supply the actual cells. And again, you, you know, this is for a race car doing... 45 minutes of action, so the right technology and and chemistry has to be chosen by the Sony cells. Uh, Lucid do design the battery itself, and then McLaren are responsible for the delivering the powertrain and the logistics of all of that to Formula E. That does rather sound like a Silicon Valley company was doing it all themselves. I like to think of that as a positive collaboration between Motorsport Valley in the UK, Sony, of course, and Silicon Valley. It's a very positive story about working together. And more Cybertruck features, which I didn't mention on the Cybertruck show. Uh, let me just kind of run through the things which I think I forgot to mention. The Vault, which otherwise known as the flatbed, but Tesla give it their own name, obviously. Uh, they call it the Vault, has a cover, and it slides down uh, for security. You can leave your tools in there or your camping gear, and it's going to be safe. It's electrically operated, and it's a motorized cover, stows away when not needed behind the rear window, and of course, when it's down, you can't see out the back of the car, so the the rear view mirror isn't a mirror, it's a camera facing backwards, so you can see behind. Solar panels are part of it as well, that only kind of came out afterwards on Twitter, I think, because someone tweeted Elon Musk. Solar panels can be incorporated into the Vault's cover when it's out. That could give you 15 miles of range in a day, says Elon Musk, who has in the past been very vocal about solar panels on cars being pointless because they're stored indoors. But I guess he's thinking of the Cybertruck as an outdoorsy working vehicle, not tucked away in underground parking lots all day of an office building. And so he's saying, actually, if you put solar panels on it, you get 15 miles a day. Useful if you're out in the wilds camping at the ATV. Quad bike, which was shown off as Elon's and finally moment. Yes, they barely made mention of it on the event, let alone saying about how do I get one. Uh, It will be available initially to Cybertruck owners as an accessory. How cool is that? How many car companies can say that when you're ticking the accessory list? Uh, what kind of seats do you want? Lovely. Uh, what, uh, you do autopilot? Yes, uh, full self-driving. Oh, would you like an ATV as well? Yeah, tick that box. What a cool accessory to come with as well. And, uh, of course, the big news. I almost forgot to tell you. 200,000 reservations. That's huge, right? 200,000 reservations. Uh, I should add, this time it's a fully refundable $100 deposit. Of course, there were 400,000 reservations of the Model 3 when uh, many people were placing that sight unseen back in the day, and that was, at, at the time, $1,000 refundable. So, yeah, 200,000 is a lot. I mean, it's, it's more than a lot. It's incredible. It should be giving other truck makers uh, sleepless nights. I don't think it will. I don't think they, they, they think of it as competition, or maybe they do. I don't know. But it's not as much money. Uh, to Tesla's uh, bottom line to sit on for two years before they actually deliver a truck. I did ask you for your comments about the Cybertruck because I want to know what you think. I'm going to run through a couple of those now if you'd like to hear what your fellow listeners thought. Uh, Werner Engel, Werner Engel said, I was shocked at first, but I love it now. The user V10PDTDI says, what about body, body damage in case of an accident? It would be costly on a regular truck. Uh, but you still just unbolt the front fenders and paint a new one on. This time, the truck is one single piece. If you think the Model 3 takes a long time to repair, you haven't seen anything yet. Okay, negative comment there about the Cybertruck. Aaron Bounds says, 500 miles of EV range for 70k. The bar has been set high. Dave Milk says, I'm in the US. Every pickup truck I see now on the street looks like a thing from the past. I would never have guessed. 
I, I did the same thing. I was I looked at a couple of pickup trucks today when I was driving, and they came past, and I thought, you know what? Now that I've seen the cyber truck, that just looks. It's like a farm vehicle. It looks so old-fashioned. Literally overnight. I wasn't thinking that last week. Peter Miller, or Pete Miller, says, aside from the impressive specs, one has to wonder what Tesla has up their sleeve when it comes to manufacturing efficiency due to the competitive price of 39.9. That, to me, is the exciting part, the fact the cost of manufacturing and batteries will come down further, and the Cybertruck is proof of that phenomena. The more I look at it, the more I like it. Derek Lee, no relation, says, Human brain always needs time to get familiar and adjust to a new concept that drastically deviates from something having been around for 100 years. The Cybertruck grows quickly on many people. Mark Evans says, Personally, don't like it, but you have to admire Tesla for trying it. Akko uh, Sipinki, the user on my YouTube channel, says, With its design... Anyone can vinyl wrap it easily. So you don't want stainless steel and you want your own custom wrap. Not a big job. Tasman says, wow, all those concept photos missed the mark big time. Where's the flux capacitor? Only Elon could pull this off. And there's no self-charging. Hey, don't you start. Obviously a regular listener. Uh, Brian Carter says, the truck has grown on me as well. After thinking about all that information that you covered at the end of your last podcast, it really got me excited about the truck. $100 $100 refundable deposits. I think I might order one. Abdul Sharin says, oh, Abdul Shine, it's the reverse for me. The more I see it, the more I think Elon was on acid when they came up with it. This is a terrible looking vehicle. Malcolm Connor, form follows function, and it means it will eventually be accepted as the truck to beat. Ford will have to pay more for the battery alone than the cost of the Cybertruck. And Phil Terry, said to me, one thing is for sure, that thing pulls up beside you and you're going to remember it, especially when it leaves you standing at the lights. Yeah, it was an impressive uh, demo. They did it uh, doing a 0 to 60 race against a Porsche. Elon said, we even gave the Porsche a head start and it still beat it. Uh, yeah, and that was the dual motor, the mid-range, or the middle of the range, not mid-range, uh, the one that they showed on screen, the unveil, the tri-motor. That doesn't come until a year later. So, thank you very much for your comments. Let's get on to question of the week this week. We'll be read out on Sunday's show. If you were doing the marketing for an EV company, how would you do it? What would be in the TV ad? Or would you just do a Cybertruck launch for billions of free publicity? Well, if you want to email me anytime, you can do hello at evnewsdaily.com. Thank you to 251 patrons of the podcast. And thank you for your continued generosity. It's a time of the year when I know that sometimes people start to save up for the holiday season, Thanksgiving, Christmas around the corner as well, and money's tight. And I don't mind if you need to stop supporting this show because you do what you do, and it's amazing. Thank you so much. If you need to pause Patreon, I totally understand. I never want to take your support for granted, but if you do want to continue your support, which allows me to do this show, I really appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. If, oh, by the way, my premium partners, I always like to give them a mention, Phil Roberts of Electric Future and Cyber Truck Deposit Placer. Uh, Brad Crosby. And Avid Technology. In the archive, 649 shows. The new ones come at you first and free and automatically if you are a podcast subscriber. Do have a wonderful day. Catch you soon. Remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.